Many cell types secrete proteins in response to specific stimuli. The actin cytoskeleton has long been implicated in regulating this process, but as Dan Cutler from the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Cell Biology in London explains, actin's precise function in regulated secretion remains unclear. In some systems, actin appears to interfere with exocytosis, in others to promote it. So for example, it's been thought to act as a physical barrier to exocytosis. It's been thought to prop open fusion pores or indeed to manipulate exocytosis by squeezing out content. And so a huge variety of different functions have been attributed to actin in regulated exocytosis. And we thought that with our system, we might be able to get a handle on which of these phenomena were true in one particular system where we could look carefully at secretion of a single secretory organelle. The system that Cutler uses is the regulated exocytosis of viable Pallardi bodies, the secretory granules of endothelial cells. These organelles contain several secretory proteins involved in vascular functions like hemostasis and inflammation. They're a great system for studying regulated secretion because they are enormous, floating around in endothelial cells that are very large and very flat, which aids microscopy and they secrete their content relatively slowly, allowing you to look at the order of events involved in exocytosis more accurately. So, so because actin might play a variety of different functions in exocytosis, we thought we needed an assay that would allow us to distinguish between fusion and content release. And so we used two different markers found in viable Pallardi bodies to track the secretory process. The first of these markers was a red fluorescent soluble version of the leukocyte receptor P-selectin, which rapidly diffuses away from viable Pallardi bodies as soon as they fuse with the plasma membrane. The second marker was a GFP-tagged version of the platelet-recruiting protein von Willebrand factor, the major constituent of viable Pallardi bodies, which is slowly released as a long, multimeric string in the 20 seconds or so following granule fusion. Viable Pallardi bodies carrying these two markers appear yellow in the cytoplasm. They turn green when P-selectin is lost immediately after fusion, and they gradually lose this fluorescence as von Willebrand factor is slowly extruded from the cell. The researchers, led by postdoc Tom Nightingale, added the actin polymerization inhibitor cytochalasin E to cells and saw two different effects on the process of viable Pallardi body secretion. We saw an increased incident of fusion, but there was something else going on as well. We saw a marked lack of exotosis from the viable Pallardi body. So the VWS GFP got stuck inside the granules and didn't get released at the cell surface. So there was two things going on, two independent, actin-dependent events that we disturbed by using cytochalasin E. Cytochalasin E probably increases granule fusion by disrupting the actin filaments that are known to anchor viable Pallardi bodies in the cytoplasm via the RAB27A GTPase. But the inhibition of von Willebrand factor release suggested that actin usually promotes the extrusion of granule content after fusion. To find out how, Nightingale et al. visualised the actin cytoskeleton in live endothelial cells. That's when we first noticed that there was something different going on at the actual fusion point. So just after the viral party body fused, about two seconds post-fusion, we saw a, a marked um, remodelling of the actin. This small ring of actin forms. We worked out how to fix and image these processes by immunofluorescence using some help of another collaborator, Louise Kramer. We found that this actin ring forms at the base of viral party bodies and it appears very quickly and disappears very quickly. It's very dynamic and we figured it must be involved in VDF expulsion. The appearance and disappearance of the actin rings coincided with the release of von Willebrand factor from fused viral Pallardi bodies, during which time the organelles change from a cigar shape to a more rounded structure. Nightingale et al. then looked for other proteins that might also localise to these rings. An obvious candidate was, was myosin 2, as it's got a, a pretty well characterised role in, in a number of other secretion processes. And also we saw this change in shape, so maybe that hints at a force generating protein. So uh, we localised myosin 2 to the actin ring, and then we used uh, myosin 2 inhibitors to show 
that if you inhibited myosin 2, you saw a similar effect to phthalaclazin E in that the BWF didn't get out of the uh, viable bloody body as it should. What is this dynamic actomyosin ring doing to promote von Willebrand factor release? One possibility is that it holds open a fusion pore between the viable Pallardi bodies and the plasma membrane, and that actin and myosin inhibitors close this pore, thereby blocking content extrusion. In order to test that, we thought that the easiest thing was actually to just directly look. So we identified individual exocytic events by light microscopy, and then found them again in specimens prepared for conventional transmission EM, took serial sections and reconstructed in 3D what was going on. And essentially what you can see is that although the von Willebrand factor is still sitting there going nowhere, the pore is actually wide open. And so it cannot be that the blocking of acting function is somehow interfering with the ability of the pore to be open. So actin has two contrasting roles in viable Pallardi body secretion, inhibiting fusion, but promoting the release of the granule's contents once fusion has occurred. So normally the viable Pallardi bodies are anchored to stop immature viable Pallardi bodies exotosing. We don't quite know what goes on, but there's some change that occurs that allows uh, viable bodies to exotose and leave, leave this tethering. They then fuse with the cell surface. In about two seconds post-fusion, an actin nucleation-dependent event occurs, and an actin ring forms around the base of the exotosing viable Pallardi body. This somehow recruits myosin 2B, and we think a contractile event occurs whereby the ring reduces in size and this forces out viral blood body content, a bit like you know, squeezing tube of toothpaste. And this allows the BDF to be expelled into the plasma and presumably then recruit platelets. It remains to be seen if actin plays similar roles in other types of regulated exocytosis, and many questions remain about the mechanism of viral blood body secretion, such as how the actin rings are nucleated on the granules after fusion. Indeed, this actomyosin recruitment might represent an important control point for endothelial cells. It's long been thought that viable Pallardi bodies contain contents that you would like to differentially release. You don't always want to put out von Willebrand factor at the same time as the smaller molecules that are in these structures. Yet no mechanistic base for how this might be done has existed. And so we would now like to think that by differentially recruiting the actin ring in different physiological circumstances, endothelial cells might be able to manipulate the extent to which, after fusion, they then carry out the expulsion of von Willebrand's factor. In the meantime, you can read more about the different functions of actin in viral Pallardi body exocytosis in the paper by Nightingale et al., published in the August 22, 2011 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.